again, I think the Ukrainians have to reflect on the reality of history and the West needs to reflect on it as well. Um, Minsk agreements were designed to achieve, you know, the, the, the rights of the Russian people without sacrificing sovereign control over this territory by Ukraine. But Ukraine and NATO and the collective West had no intention. We now know Angela Merkel, Francois Hollande, both said that the Minsk Accords were a sham designed to bind time so that NATO could train a Ukrainian army to solve the Donbass problem through force of arms. Um, it was a sham. It, it's not Russia that was looking for war. It was NATO and Ukraine. It was NATO uh, looking for war using Ukraine as a proxy. It will lead to uh, Russia having to send in military forces, uh, meaning a war, and it will result in the loss of Crimea and the Donbass. But it's all of this is, has a cause-effect relationship, whereas Russia is reacting to the pr proactive violence carried out by NATO and their Ukrainian proxies. In the unfolding saga of the Ukraine conflict, the stakes have never been higher. As weapons inspector Scott Ritter has often pointed out, the complexities of modern warfare go far beyond the battlefield. Each day brings new challenges, fresh confrontations, and decisions that may alter the course of history. Today, we delve into Ukraine's latest maneuvers, calculated moves that could either turn the tide or lead to devastating consequences with nuclear facilities in the crosshairs in key regions like Kursk and Zaporizhia becoming battlefronts, the implications of these actions extend far beyond the battlefield. This is a war not just of soldiers and weapons, but of strategies and gambits that could shape the future of entire nations. In Kursk, a critical front in this relentless conflict, Ukrainian forces have intensified their offensive, honing in on the destruction of three key bridges along the Glushkova River. These bridges are not just physical structures, they are lifelines that connect vital supply routes for the Russian military. Over the past week, Ukraine has unleashed a series of calculated strikes, each more desperate than the last, in an attempt to sever these arteries and choke off Russian resupply efforts. The initial deployment of HIMARS rocket systems designed to bring down these bridges with precision strikes fell short of its objective. Despite their technological edge, the HIMARS units failed to inflict the necessary damage, leaving the bridges standing and functional. As the Ukrainian forces scrambled to adapt, they deployed two additional HIMARS units, doubling down on their efforts. However, the Russian response was swift and lethal. Using their advanced Iskander missile systems, Russian forces targeted and destroyed both HIMARS units, neutralizing Ukraine's tactical advantage. The loss of these units marked a significant setback for Ukraine as they were among the most effective tools in their arsenal. This episode not only underscores the challenges Ukraine faces in executing its strategies, but also highlights the resilience and tactical superiority of Russian forces in this region. As the dust settles in Kursk, another theater of war heats up. Undeterred by their mounting losses, Ukraine escalated its efforts, shifting from ground-based to aerial assaults. Ukrainian MiG-29 jets, armed with glide bombs, were dispatched to finish what the HIMARS could not, these aircraft flew perilously close to Russian airspace, a bold move that spoke to Ukraine's desperation. The Russian military, however, was prepared. Their radar systems, finely tuned and highly responsive, quickly locked onto the MiG-29s. As these jets completed their bombing runs and turned back towards their base in Poltava, Russian forces executed a precise counterattack. Tracking the aircraft's return path, they launched a devastating strike, obliterating the MiG-29 in midair, this strike was not just a tactical victory, it was a symbolic blow to Ukraine's air capabilities. In a single fateful day, Ukraine suffered the loss of four HIMARS units, two Patriot air defense systems, one Iris-T missile defense system, and the MiG-29 each a significant asset in their own right. The sheer scale of these losses cannot be overstated. For Ukraine, this day will be remembered as one of the darkest in its military history, a day when their aspirations collided with the harsh realities of Russian military might. The repercussions of this defeat will echo through the halls of Ukraine's military command, forcing a re-evaluation of their strategies and perhaps a recalibration of their objectives. Yet, as the skies over Kursk clear, the ground beneath Ukraine's feet continues to shift. While the battles rage on the front lines behind the scenes, Russia is quietly amassing its forces, maneuvering in ways that are as enigmatic as they are strategic. Recent announcements from the Russian Duma hint at a significant increase in troop numbers by the end of the year, potentially doubling the current forces to around 800,000 soldiers. However, these figures are far from concrete. The Russian government has, at times, claimed numbers ranging from 600,000 to 2.4 million, 
creating a fog of uncertainty that confounds analysts and military strategists alike. This ambiguity is not accidental, it is a deliberate tactic designed to keep adversaries guessing and off balance. Scott Ritter has frequently commented on the unpredictability of Russian military strategy, emphasizing how this ambiguity serves to keep their adversaries off balance. Western intelligence agencies, despite their vast resources, have struggled to accurately predict Russia's next moves. The unpredictable nature of Russian military planning is both a strength and a weakness. It allows Russia to maintain an element of surprise, but it also risks internal disorganization. Yet, as history has shown, Russia thrives in the chaos of war, leveraging its ability to adapt quickly and ruthlessly. This strategic ambiguity extends beyond troop numbers. It permeates every aspect of Russia's war efforts. Whether it's the deployment of special forces, the repositioning of artillery units, or the fortification of defensive positions, each move is shrouded in mystery, leaving Ukraine and its allies in a constant state of uncertainty. As speculation continues, the battlefield in Zaporizhia tells a tale of its own. In the south, the Zaporizhia region has become a focal point of intense military activity. Ukrainian forces gathering strength near Rykiv are preparing for what could be a pivotal offensive. The Zaporizhia nuclear power plant, one of the largest of its kind in Europe, lies at the heart of this region. Its strategic importance cannot be overstated. Control of this facility would not only provide a significant energy resource, but also serve as a powerful leverage point in the broader conflict. Ukrainian forces are acutely aware of this, and their buildup in the region suggests that they are gearing up for a large-scale assault. The concentration of troops in areas such as Pyatikaki, Nesteryanka, and Robine indicates that Ukraine may be planning a multi-pronged attack, potentially involving both ground forces and naval assets. The Dnieper River, with its vast network of tributaries, offers both a challenge and an opportunity. Any Ukrainian operation aimed at capturing the nuclear plant would require extensive preparation, including the mobilization of amphibious units, naval vessels, and waves for reconnaissance and support. The complexity of such an operation cannot be underestimated and the risks are enormous. A miscalculation here could lead to catastrophic consequences, not just for the combatants, but for the entire region. But as Ukraine's plans unfold, Russia's response in other regions adds another layer of complexity. In the northern reaches of the conflict, Russia's defensive strategies continue to evolve, reflecting a deep understanding of both the terrain and the tactics needed to exploit it. The Kursk region, with its challenging geography and harsh climate, provides a natural stronghold for Russian forces. Special forces units, including the elite Akhmat and Wagner groups, have been deployed to key areas focusing on attrition warfare a tactic that Russia has perfected over centuries of conflict. By allowing Ukrainian forces to advance into seemingly advantageous positions, Russia is setting the stage for a prolonged and grinding conflict, one that will drain Ukrainian resources and morale over time. Scott Ritter has observed that Russia's ability to wage attrition warfare is one of its greatest strengths, a strategy deeply rooted in its military doctrine. Russia's approach here is not merely defensive, it is a calculated method of warfare that leverages every advantage from natural terrain to military tactics. The rugged terrain of Kursk, with its dense forests and treacherous rivers, provides the perfect backdrop for this kind of warfare. The goal is clear to bleed Ukraine dry, both physically and psychologically, and to do so on Russian terms, in Russian territory. This is a war of attrition in its purest form and Russia is playing the long game with the patience and endurance that comes from centuries of military tradition. As these strategies play out on the ground, the broader geopolitical implications come into focus. Beyond the immediate conflict, the war in Ukraine is exerting tremendous pressure on the geopolitical landscape. The strained relationships between Ukraine and its Western allies are becoming increasingly evident, particularly as economic concerns take center stage. Germany, once a steadfast supporter of Ukraine, recently provided a EUR50 billion loan, a significant sum, but one that comes with strings attached. This financial support, while crucial for Ukraine's ongoing war efforts, also signals a shift in priorities. Western nations are grappling with their own economic challenges and the appetite for continued military aid is waning. Ukrainian President Zelensky's repeated calls for more advanced weaponry, including long-range strike capabilities, have met with mixed reactions. While some Western leaders remain committed to supporting Ukraine, others are beginning to question the wisdom of further escalation, 
The divide between Ukraine's ambitions and the West's willingness to support them is growing, creating tensions that could have far-reaching consequences. At the same time, Russia is capitalizing on these divisions, using them to weaken the Western alliance and further its own strategic goals. The geopolitical chess game is as complex as it is dangerous, with each move potentially altering the balance of power in the region. As Western support wavers, the battle for Kursk and Zaporizhia intensifies. As we stand at this critical juncture in the Ukraine conflict, the decisions made in the coming days and weeks will have profound implications. As Scott Ritter has highlighted the battle for Kursk, the maneuvers in Zaporizhia, and the shifting alliances on the global stage, all of these factors are interwoven in a complex tapestry of war and diplomacy. For Ukraine and Russia, the stakes could not be higher. The cost of this conflict in lives lost and futures destroyed is staggering. Yet the end remains elusive with no clear resolution in sight. As the world watches, one thing is certain this war is far from over and its echoes will be felt for generations to come. Stay tuned as we continue to follow this developing story, bringing you the latest insights and analysis from the front lines.